So hello, uh, thank you for being here with us and thank you for talking to us. Uh, for the sake of our audience being more um, informed, could you please introduce yourself and tell us about your area of expertise? Mm -hmm. Um, I'm Mary Young. I'm a pediatrician uh, by training, and I've worked for over um, three decades on the on the area on the topic of um, maternal and child health, and and for the past twenty years on the on the early child development. So integrating what we know from uh, from the science from different disciplines, looking at what um, can be done to improve the potential or help children realize their pot full potential. Um, so that is what um, uh, I have worked um, uh, previously at um, the World Bank as a lead child development specialist. Um, since my retirement, I've been working as an advisor at um, Harvard uh, University's uh, Center on Developing Child, um, also um, uh, co-leader uh, of early childhood interventions with um, uh, Professor Heckman, the Nobel laureate in economics um, at the University of Chicago, trying to kind of you know, look at uh, um, the research aspects of um, early uh, intervention and how that can uh, help us further the field of uh, investing in young children. Tell us please, in your view, why is early childhood development important and what should we perceive when we speak about early childhood development? What is all about? Mm -hmm. Early child development really is the foundation for for our entire uh, um, uh, development. It doesn't even just affect kind of immediate, the short term of um, better health, um, but in the medium run, you know, improve um, our, um, children's development in you know performance in education, and then later on, um, uh, improving their life lifelong um, um, health and behavior. So. Early on, what we now know about early childhood, uh, um, uh, childhood has long implications across the whole life lifespan. Based on the science that we now know about how uh, early um, uh, brain development is dependent on that uh, experiences that child is being exposed to. And that, in a way, turns on and off our genes, affecting our brain's architecture, our function, um, and, and then that as we as we uh, develop. So it's tremendous important for us to focus on the early years um, uh, to be able to do it right, to be able to, to kind of real, you know, to provide the best environment for children's uh, brain development. As science progresses, is there a gap between what we used to know or what we used to perceive as early child development and what we now know, the evidence we have now um, in support to the importance of early child development? Right. Um, no, that's very important question because um, we used to, the old thinking is that, you know, you, you know if, if you're born with the set of capabilities or a set of skills um, and then that, that, that's what, so it's basically what your parents um, uh, uh, provide you and your genes determine what you are. Actually, that is no longer true. It's what we now, what we now know, the new science is that the environment where the child is being exposed to, starting from the prenatal period, you know, the nutritional input, mother's well-being, that um, starting from prenatal period all the way up to birth, you know, the environment, the interaction that the child uh, is being exposed to, to the, to the, to the primary caregiver, that affects um, children's uh, brain development, and that will affect lifelong health, education attainment, uh, behavior, mental health, physical health. So it's tre tremendous kind of um, uh, um, uh, new science that we now know um, uh, on how important it is um, you know, to those early, uh, early years and how it is dependent on that environment. So it's no longer purely um, a medical model uh, saying that uh, you know the, you know we are uh, who, who were born with a set of um, uh, uh, capabilities. Um, uh, it is that early experience, the ecology, the, you know, the how, um, uh, what the child is being exposed to within the environment, you know, how they interact, adult-child interaction, that uh, drives child's 
you know, child's entire uh, life in terms of their language, in their cognition, in their, their um, social emotional skills. Uh, so it's tremendously important, uh, those early years. Can you tell us why it is important to invest in early child development from the point of view of the society, not the individual child or person, but why it is important for the society as a whole? Mm -hmm. Um, it is important because you know if we re every child realize their full potential, we'll have a more productive, more harmonious society as children um, as it becomes adults. I mean, especially now uh, in a in a global market, in a knowledge economy, what we need now in terms of skills are um, are not just uh, blue collars working in, in, uh, in factories. We need those kind of knowledge workers. And those skills, you know, the, 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 the social emotional skills, the interpersonal skills, the, the skills to work better uh, in teams. Um, um, uh, so in, in, in other words, those soft, we call soft skill, we call those character. Those skills are developed early very early uh, in, the, in the first few years, um, uh, along with cognitive skills. And what we have learned now that, you know, for individuals, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, human being, individual child, as they develop, those early years help them acquire not just the, the cognitive, the social emotional skills, but those skills are in a way last, you know, in a way help them perform better in schools, help them later on attain a higher level education, have fewer um, behavioral issues, um, and then they have better health in terms of a, a lower level of chronic, uh, um, uh, issue, chronic health issues. So it's tremendously important for society is that when we invest early on, uh, the benefit is really for, for the whole country's uh, economic development. Um, you said chronic health issues. Can you elaborate a little bit upon that? Mm -hmm. What is the relation between this early child development mm -hmm. and the health condition that we have later in life? Mm -hmm. So we now know that um, there are what we call the fetal origins of, um, uh, of diseases. So that um, starting, starting very, very early, how the child uh, is being exposed in the environment. If they are kind of in a, uh, in a very stressful environment, very harsh, you know, parents, you know, abuse or neglect, uh, all those kind of environment in a way damages the, the brain development, damages their, um, uh, their, their kind of response to, um, to further stress. So that, in a way, because uh, it's the origin of many of the chronic diseases such as high blood pressure, diabetes, uh, coronary, heart disease. So the, the adverse situation early on in life when the child is being exposed to carries, is translated into a bio, biologically inflammatory response so that later on um, uh, in, as adults they have a higher prevalence of chronic diseases. What about the psychological effect, yes. the psychological side of the of, of the diseases mm -hmm. like depression? Yes, um, uh, similarly uh, with mental health, uh, we know now that the children who were um, expo uh, were kind of neglected or being abused, in, that grew up in an abusive environment, or exposed to parents who have mental health issues or or um, substance abuse, those children growing that kind of stressful environment, they um, have higher chance of um, an, a depression or alcoholic um, uh, uh, alcohol abuse or drug abuse. So a tremendous impact of early years on later uh, behavioral uh, issues, mental health. Can you tell us a bit more about the connection of uh, a child's success in school and the development this child has uh, received beforehand? Mm -hmm. We have now seen that um, you know what the child is exposed to in a kind of early intervention, early environment, has those kind of, has has kind of the tremendous um, uh, impact on school performance. Children who have had some um, early intervention, they do better, they perform better in school, and then they they enter school ready to learn. So, so that um, you know that, so so there's a very distinct differences between those who have had early interventions versus those who did not in terms of their school performance. Likewise, it's not just kind of the early intervention, meaning pre preschool. Children early on from, from birth, they are 
you know, the brain is developing, so that, that, that interaction with parents, how parents sing, talk, and read to them, all that language exposure uh, helps the child develop um, uh, language uh, vocabulary. And then through vocabulary, the better vocabulary, they do but much better um, uh, when they, they are in school. So early on, starting from birth, you know, the children's brain are developing, they develop their, they, they are listening, they're hearing, their vision, um, touch, um, all those uh, sens sensory inputs that they receive from outside of their, uh, of their environment, from, from the environment, that is translated into brain uh, uh, connections, um, particularly um, uh, the language development, and then that, in a way, it subsequently uh, helps children um, uh, do better uh, in school, their success. So studies that have shown that um, children, um, by difference in income, by difference in sensory inputs, there's a there's um, uh, very much kind of a difference in how they uh, how they do by the time they enter school. So um, children from very low income families or didn't have that um, uh, nurturing early environment, they already starting at school far behind from those who are more privileged had had that early uh, nurturing and stimulating environment. What's your impression? Do you do you think or do you feel throughout the years that you have? Uh, um, follow this uh, issue, does the understanding of the importance of early child development grow in recent years or in, in recent decades? I mean among politicians, among families, among communities. Um, do people now, nowadays, understand better the, the importance of uh, early child development? I think more and more, but definitely much more needs to be done. Um, you know, we have we need to continually raise awareness um, uh, for parents for them to understand the importance of um, the early nurturing, early uh, early stimulation, so that you know they will be able to work with their children at the first level first contact, um, that how important it is that the brain, uh, the brain is developing um, as the babies are, you know, from uh, uh, after birth. It's not, you know, they are not set, um, um, you know, during, uh, during the, 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 peri uh, the prenatal period. So we, we have parents we have that need, um, uh, uh, need to understand, need to have that support. Um, uh, not understanding, but in the society, you know, health, health uh, from the health disciplines, from the social uh, disciplines, all need to be able to support, provide the parents um, the, the know-how to be able to uh, work with their children. Um, doesn't just happen overnight uh, in terms of uh, parent understanding. Um, a lot of kind of uh, um, uh, old conce concepts are still there. Um, so I think that every sector, every uh, from the public, from the private, um, from different disciplines, uh, we all need to work together trying to kind of support the parents uh, so that they will understand their critical role and then they will be supported um, like through, for example, the program that, you, uh, that UNICEF is promoting here, home visiting, providing that um, uh, support to the families. Um, trying to get, uh, you know, help them reduce risk factors, help them protect, promote children's development starting from birth all the way uh, throughout the early childhood. You mentioned one of the activities UNICEF is trying to promote in Bulgaria, mm -hmm. and you are now currently in Bulgaria. You mm -hmm. had participated in a conference in the capital, Sofia. My question is, do you have impressions of um, what Bulgaria is currently doing to promote, to foster or to stimulate early child development, is it enough? Uh, should some, something be changed or improved? As far as you have impressions on UNICEF activities or any other activities that you are familiar with? I've been here for two days and I've learned tremendously and I want to congratulate UNICEF for bringing together many partners. I think this past two days, the conference has been tremendously important. And then I, you know, uh, it's now we're not hearing, we're not com talking only to the converted. We have a kind of a great range of uh, partners. And just hearing, I was reflecting, I said, you know, how different it is from 10, 20 years ago when we talked about early child development, it was a very foreign concept. You know, the inter 
understanding of it is extremely um, uh, uh, limited, uh, kind of with each, each sector talking within their own silos. But I see here in the past two days, there's a kind of tremendous convergence um, of different sectors from the public, from the, you know, there was the, the health sector, there was the, the uh, education sector, there's the social protection sector, then from the private, the civil society, um, the, the children's network, in the, so there are, and there are so many additional partners all talking together. So I hear um, uh, that there is that kind of, you know, slow, is it you know against the you know very much kind of changing changing uh, uh, um, background the context because we have this now um, decentralization of, um, of health services right the government is letting um, um, not the private sector but letting services to be run by you know various um, uh, at different levels um, so therefore it becomes increasingly hard to say well we have a policy and then everything gets implemented but I think against all those kind of um, trends uh, we, I see that you know different stakeholders are getting together and talking about the different uh, uh, needs and working toward a common goal so I think that was very exciting to hear this kind of coming together looking at this kind of horizontal integration looking at you know how do, what do we do at kind of the community level um, of um, uh, uh, raising awareness um, as kind of prevention providing uh, services for all, so bringing more parents, uh, bringing in the kind of disseminating the knowledge, and then be able to kind of then um, uh, at the treatment level uh, or intervention level having services for children, those at, at risk, those are you know those are kind of in the mainstream, and then those are very high risk having you know even additional services. So I see work in progress, but and I think you know uh, you are doing a wonderful job um, here taking that lead, coordinating. Uh, for example, I hear the home visiting programs. That is something which previously it was done uh, uh, in the old system, but uh, has abandoned with the, the recent uh, changes. But now it's being reintroduced, re-taken up, um, uh, trying to kind of find which is the best way trying to uh, uh, to reintroduce uh, um, how, what GP can do, what pediatricians can do, what kind of the health uh, system, the maternal child health system can do. So I think it's a tremendous progress and uh, um, definitely it's very exciting what, what you're doing. Again on this topic of the conference, is there something or uh, many things that you would take with you as a lesson, something that you learned from this conference? Mm -hmm. I think you know that um, kind of the, that excitement, that kind of trying to work together, develop that common framework, common language, um, that we want um, our children, our Bulgarian children, to have each child to reach their full potential, whether they're coming from the very adverse uh, situations or from uh, you know from um, uh, minority uh, groups. I think trying to develop that um, uh, uh, common framework to uh, you apply the science to translate to practice, um, I think that is a, that is a very um, a wonderful um, uh, thing that you are doing and that's what my take, take home uh, message, you know, where take home to say, well, yes, you know, look, you know, they are working on, uh, on that. My final question, uh, is there something that um, I probably forgot to ask or is of a big importance when we talk about early child development? and you want us to bear as a message to always keep in mind when we deal with the um, topic of early childhood development, uh, a slogan, a message, something that is really important that you would like to share with us. You know, I think if we summarize like in one sentence, they would, would be that, you know, the, you know, we need to intervene um, uh, when uh, at the time where it is most um, uh, effective, meaning we intervene earlier, where all those interventions helps us later on uh, um, uh, trying uh, trying to um, uh, develop, uh, you know, the, the the realize the potential. So I think that's what uh, you know. So working on um, uh, on the preventive aspect. Uh, which is what you're doing, looking at early years as kind of uh, preventing those 
later um, uh, disability, disability or la later um, uh, problems that can that will happen. So, when it's most effective in the early years, so it's intervening early, inter intervening effectively, and uh, intervening um, often in a way, kind of you know. So that that kind of uh, message, you know, um, uh, is what uh, um, we need to constantly remind ourselves that you know we want to um, to be able to. Um, uh, bring those intervention, bring that knowledge that we all have, and apply that into what we do, and continually to monitor and evaluate because you know we want to make sure that what we do is most effectively uh, done and most efficiently done, so that we'll be able to um, um, uh, you know continually convince policymakers that what they're investing has an impact not only in the short run but also in the long run. Um, so uh, that is. Uh, uh, those are the, the, the key messages. Okay, yeah. mm -hmm. thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome.